Yo, what's up? It's the Ant Man channel. It's Tuesday. It's, I mean, it's uh, Thursday, the 16th May 2013. Excuse me, I was getting a tongue twister there. It is Thursday, the 16th May 2013, and I got a article in front of me from WND.com under Worst Case AMP Scenario. You know, I always post these type of uh, articles. I'm really like, I don't know why. I'm always into these like EMP like scenario type ordeals. But anyway, yeah, this is an exclusive. Uh, if you want to go look at it for yourself, it's under WND.com. It's an exclusive. Worst case EMP scenario, half in U.S. dead. Threat surges as sun spots zero in on Earth. F. Michael Malouf. All right, Washington. The sun has kicked into high gear and produced four so-called X-class solar flares over the past week from a solar spot, which is un which is expected to come more into alignment with Earth as the sun's activity peaks with year, with this year and next. This intense sunstorms are uh, the intense sunstorms are expected to last as long as 2020. Until now, the sun has remained relatively dormant. But with four X-class eruptions in one week, it is beginning to reach its solar storm maximum. In this latest 11-year uh, uh, cycle of activity, scientists of National uh, Aeronautics and Space Administration and Solar Dynamics Observatory say that these latest eruptions are the first class or the first X-class flares that the sun has produced in this cycle. Of the four X-class flares, the first registered at X 1.2, scientists said. Uh, it was the weakest, but at the week but as the week continued, more powerful flares registered at X or times 3.2, which scientists say have has been the strongest of the year. The numbers assigned to the flares correlate in their strength to their strengths. Uh, an X2, for example, is twice in inten as intense as an X1, while an X3 is three times as intense. The strongest flare recorded during the sun's 11-year cycle was an X6.9. This occurred on August 9, 2011. The second strongest was an X5.4 on March 7, 2012. The sun is going through cycle, uh, solar cycle 24, which began in January 2008. So far during solar cycle 24, there have been 19 X-class solar flares, scientists say. Um, along with the radiation from the flares, there also is a cor uh, coronal mass uh, ejection, or CME. During a CME, billions of tons of highly charged particles are ejected to interact with Earth's, magnet with Earth's a magnetic field, causing radio blackouts and the shutdown or destruction of vulnerable electrical grid systems and sensitive electric components. Did you guys hear that? That's pretty... Yeah, I've been reporting on this kind of stuff for a while. And this is, like, pretty much the only thing that really kind of, like, whoa, is, like... That's that's really serious, all right? I'm not worried about North Korea or whatever the hell people that watch Fox News are worried about. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about things like this. Because this stuff can... This is real. This is space. And there's nothing you can do about this kind of stuff. There's a solar flare coming... And it could probably knock out all of our, you know, defense systems, and then we could be vulnerable to any type of attack. That's real. That is a real scenario, though. The initial X-class flares came from the same active sunspot region, which scientists identify as AR-1748. They say it was away from the Earth. Although it is possible that their effects could just glance the Earth's magnetic field, as it was, it caused some radio blackout, scientists said. While the flares spewing from the sunspot went off into space, the AR-1748 is rotating more in alignment with Earth, scientists say. Scientists said that an increase, uh, an increased number of solar flares are expected as the sun approaches its peak of high activity. The Space Weather Prediction Center said that upcoming solar activity is expected to be moderate, with a 50% probability of more X flare. X-class flares erupting in the net in the weeks ahead. Given that the United States and other Western countries rely on a technologically based society with critical infrastructures all run by electronics, this increases space weather activity takes on a high level of importance. For one thing, um, this increase in space weather activity takes on a high level level of importance. For one thing, the U.S. national grid system is vulnerable in its own right, but with an electromagnetic pulse or EMP generated from the sun's flare, uh, flares, some of which can be up to 10 times the size of the earth, the unprotected grid including transformers, electrical components, and automated control systems that everyone takes for granted in their everyday lives could either be severely damaged or fried 
taking months if not years to replace. NASA estimates that a direct hit to Earth from one of these enormous flares would have a ca catastrophic impact on the nation's critical infrastructures over a very wide geographical area. And you and you got all these robots coming out too, man. And it's like we we're going to like this is like some like terminator ridiculousness going on here. Um let's see here. I mean, me, I mean, if you really pay attention to all the other stuff that goes on that they're trying to roll out, you know, well, I don't know. Whew, a lot of stuff going on. Friday takes on the next place. NASA, da, 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 da. In the first year alone, NASA estimates such a disaster could cost just the U.S. upwards of $2 trillion. It also would take from 4 to 10 years to recover. If that even would be possible and affect the lives of some 160 million people, threatening starvation and death. Some EMP experts say that such a catastrophic event could potentially wipe out America's urban centers due to their total dependency on their critical infrastructures for everyday electricity, communications, food and water delivery, oil and gas, transportation, automated banking and financial institutions, and even emergency services. These experts... Um, Say grocery stores, for example, would have their shelves cleared in a matter of hours due to the panic that would sweep the population. Normally, grocery stores carry a maximum of three days of production of products before having them restocked. However, restocking would come to a halt due to the inability of trucks to function while fueling stations unable to pump the fuel needed to run the vehicles. Automated control devices that regulate the flow of oil and natural gas through the hundreds of thousands of miles of pipelines that cr uh, crisscross the nation would be trip, uh, tripped, causing geographically widespread secondary fires and explosions. Such an event would not just occur out of a remote field. Fires and explosions also could occur under streets and even into people's houses. The inability of fire and medical emergency services to respond would result in further disastrous consequences for the population. Because automated systems ensure fresh water delivery, all filtering and sewage systems in the urban setting would face the high prospect of shutting down, leading to d uh, disease such as uh, cholera uh, and dysentery. In addition, there would be little likelihood of medical attention because the hospitals and first responder emergency equipment, which rely on electronics and communications equipment, may no longer function. Hospitals would have backup generators, however, they may have electrical starters and may not function at all. Other, others may run on gasoline or diesel and will only function for as long as there is fuel, which would need to be trucked in by vehicles that may have automated starters. NASA estimates that as many as 350 of the large customized transformers which maintain a power supply across the nation are only produced abroad would be destroyed because they are expensive, some costing as much as $20 million a copy, utilizes or utilities don't keep spares on hand. They could take years to replace, especially if a number of technologically dependent countries, transformers are affected by a direct solar flare impact. Um, I don't know, you know, that's um, totally up to, you know, just nothing that we could do about that. If there really is a, what this scientist is calling the, the, a cycle, that the sun is, a solar cycle 24, he says. If that's like a real thing, man, and like that, you know, that that's something that we should prepare for, then I, I say, why not? Why not, you know, it's not a conspiracy theory if it's science, right? Or it's not even, this isn't even something I can even trace back to anything being said in the Bible, if it even is real, or if it even is going to happen. I just say that that is kind of a that is kind of a very um, different subject that a lot of people on my YouTube channel like to look into, and that's something that everybody should be aware of. That an EMP is a real uh, an EMP, whether it be from the sun or whether it be man-made, is um, a real threat to our our infrastructures, and it's just you know just a number of things that we we should that are actually are a threat to us. What isn't a threat to us is North Korea. What isn't a threat to us is whatever, uh, you know, Al Gore is spewing out of his mouth. Um, those things are not real. So let's just focus on things that are. So, you know, so that we can, uh, you know, pretty much steer the boat back on course or whatever you, however you want to look at it. But anyway, if this was your first time being on my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you know you want to. You know, uh, I'm better than CBS, man. You know, you can't, you can't pass that up. But anyway... 
You guys have a blessed day.